Hey guys, let's begin vacations. Welcome back to another review, this time of the 2014 horror film. A little bit of comedy mixed in between. Excuse me. And it's a film that was another film from Australia that I really enjoyed. Um, I was curious about the film because I saw, I saw the trailer. The trailer got me interested in the movie. Um, the, I'll just say it right off the bat. The movie itself is not exactly what the trailer advertised it was. The trailer advertised the film as a movie where a girl ends up breaking the law and she gets put in house arrest at her at her mother's home, you know, her childhood home, the last place she wants to be at, and with the twist that, you know, it's haunted. Well, the movie itself goes in a different direction. And I'm gonna go I'm gonna go into spoilers later in this review. I'm you know, and I'll let you know when I'm gonna do that. Um, but anyway, but this is one of those rare films where they went in a different direction, but it didn't really bug me that much because they did it. They did a really good job with it. See, that's the thing. I don't care if you do things differently than what you're advertising the film as, as long as you do a good job, as long as what you do differently actually works. That's my thing. As long as what you do differently actually works and is and doesn't detract from the film, okay. But if you completely mislead me like the gray and tell me that Liam Neeson is going to punch a wolf in the face and there's going to be a lot of thrills and chills and and spills and then nothing really happens and you give me an art house film instead I don't, I'm not, no uh, if you're going to give me a movie that's advertised as Arnold Schwarzenegger getting revenge as a one man army versus you know a bunch of Mexican cartels who you know killed his wife and then you give me a movie where he just mostly just pretty much tells a bunch of dickheads to shut the fuck up for an hour and a half and then die, sits and dies in a fucking bar at the end of the movie after he shot a couple guys in the most anticlimactic fucking climax in an action in a movie of this caliber I could think of and you know who done it with 10 little indians with 10 dickheads who I don't give a fuck about what happens to their heads both of them, then, you know, then there's an issue. But if you do something like this movie did, where you do something different than what the film was advertised, but it actually makes the film uh, even more unique and more interesting in the long haul, then kudos. So, uh, so yeah, there are moments where the film, you know, where a movie might do something differently than, the, than it was advertised as, and I'm okay with. It's just the key thing, the key word, the key element is it has to work. But anyway, um, Housebound came out uh, last year. It didn't really get a wide release. It got released at, you know, the SX SW Festival, South by Southwest Film Festival on March 11, 2014. Um, it's both written and directed by Ger Gerard Johnstone. And John Stone was inspired to create a horror film after watching Ghost Hunters on television and received additional inspiration from classics films such as The Changeling and The Legend of Hell House, which are two excellent haunted house flicks. And while writing the script, John Stone wanted the character of Kylie, played by Morgana O'Reilly, to be someone who th wouldn't scare easy. So that way, when she does finally fall victim to fear, it's much more palpable. And he experienced some difficulty in achieving the film's exterior shots of the house, because budgetary issues limited their options of homes and renovations to the exterior of their chosen house during the course of filming, which also raised some issues. But having seen the film, uh, he does a great job, you know, d working with what he's got. And um, so the film is written and directed by Gerard Johnstone, who I'm just going to check and see real quick if this is his first film. Because I'm curious about any other projects he might be, have worked on before this, or after, or he's working on next. Um, because I really like this film. Um, it had some issues, but overall I still really enjoyed the movie. Yeah, this is his director debut. He directed some episodes of a show, TV show, called The Jackie Brown Diaries. But this is the first film that he wrote and directed. And he did an amazing job, and I hope he gets, I hope he gets a, another shot to direct more movies because he definitely has a talent. He doesn't he definitely has a he just definitely knows how to direct a, a movie. He knows how to direct, he knows how to set up his shots, and he knows how to uh, give his film this he knows how to give his movies this energy, this vibe, this really fun, energetic vibe 
that's really nice to see. It's really, it's it's something I've been. I think a lot of horror films have been missing is this energetic, fun vibe. And in many ways, it reminded me of uh, a young Peter Jackson, who was a filmmaker which I adored his early work. Uh, you know, Dead Alive, um, Bad Taste, uh, The Frighteners. Uh, meet, meet the Feebles. This is a director, Peter Jackson, who is just a really great, fun director. You know, when it comes to his horror, you know. And I just mentioned Dead Alive again because that movie is amazing and it deserves. Why is that still not on Blu-ray in the United States with features like Loaded? I don't get that. But um, anyway, the, you know, this movie definitely reminded me a little bit of uh, Peter Jackson in terms of its vibe. Now, it wasn't as gory as some of the other ones, or as, you know, filthy, but it definitely did have that sort of fun, energetic vibe that a lot of Peter Jackson's early works have. And Peter Jackson is no longer the same director. He started doing Lord of the Rings, and then he just stuck in that rut, and he just, honestly, I think most of his films just like like generic. They don't they don't have that 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 uniqueness that made his film stand up stand out from the rest it seems like he's lost that that renegade filmmaking style it's just been curbed back so much that he's just dealing he's just he's just putting out generic stuff and you know i don't i don't hate the lord of the rings films there are some of the hobbit movies i don't mind i haven't seen the, the newest one yet but king kong was really disappointing but that's a whole other story but it's just it's something that I miss. I miss the young Peter Jackson. I miss that, uh, you know, I miss the, his style. It's very unique and, and, and fun and entertaining, but at the same time had this nice black comedy about it. And that's the same thing with this movie. It's got this black kind of a, a definitely has a black sense of humor, dry, dry sense of humor, very dry wit, and it has the same sort of energy. There's a little bit of zaniness at moments, but nothing that's too over the nothing that's too too much. And so, I just wanted to make sure I give the director, you know, the writer and director, his his uh, much due credit. Um, but anyway, the film basically just the plot is this: uh, Kylie Bruck Bucknell. This is the character's name, played by um, Morgana O'Reilly. She's forced to return to the house she grew up with when the court places her on home detention because she was in the beginning of the film she tries to rob an ATM with a partner of his but he bitches out and runs away she breaks in but then she gets caught by the police and she ends up getting put under house arrest and her punishment is made all the more unbearable by the fact that she has to live there with her mother Miriam who is well in tension but she tends to talk too much she's a motor mouth who's convinced that the house is haunted and Kylie dismisses Miriam's superstitions as nothing more than a distraction from a life occupied by boiled vegetables and small town gossip. But however, when she too becomes privy to unsettling whispers and strange bumps in the night, she begins to wonder if she, whether she's inherited her overactive imagination, or if the house is in fact possessed by a hostile spirit who is less than happy about the new living arrangement. And uh, the mother, Miriam, is played by Rima T. Te Wiata. Uh, Glenn Paul, where Rue plays Amos, who is this uh, friend of hers, friend of the family, who's working on the security. He's also a ghost ghost hunter on the side. Cameron Rhodes plays Dennis. Uh, Ross Harper plays Graham. And Ryan Lamp plays Eugene. Um, I'm thinking Graham is is the psychiatrist guy. I'm thinking who that is. Who's who, uh, you know? I'm just checking to make sure that's that's who who it is. So I make sure I know who. No, it's Dennis. Dennis is played by Cameron Rhodes, who, interesting enough, had a little bit role in Lord of the Rings. He uh, played um, he played a farmer maggot, I guess, in Lord of the Rings. Um, and he's he's in a film called Deathgasm, which which is in post production right now. And he was in Power Rangers Megaforce. But anyway, I thought Cameron Rhodes did a really good job, the little bit role that he had. He reminds me a lot of Cole Meany, um, the actor Cole Meany. Uh, but any, at first, I thought it was him, but then, of course, I found out in the credits it's, it's not him. So that's the basic gist of the plot for the film. Um, but so that's, that's the, that's the non-spoiler review. So now I'm going to get into spoilers. So spoilers, here we go. I'm spoiling the movie. You know, if you haven't seen the film yet, uh, do not. And it sounds interesting to you. Don't watch the rest of this review. You know, you you know, 
you already know I like it. I, I think it's a good movie. I listed some good things about the direction and so forth. The synopsis, some good performances by the cast, especially um, Morgana O'Reilly. I really liked her performance, but you know, now I, you know, now I'm getting into spoilers. Um, so what I was mean, what I was meaning by the whole thing about how the film uh, ends up going in a different direction than was advertised as. It's advertised as a haunted house film, and instead it becomes a lot like People Under the Stairs, which was really surprising to me, and I really liked that. You know, I really love People Under the Stairs, Wes Craven's People Under the Stairs. It's one of his more underrated films that he's directed, and it was it's nice to see another film like that. And um, you find out instead of a ghost has been in the house, it's been this man named Eugene. Who, and then there's this mystery that's involved with this character who you you first you think he might be some psycho killer but then the, the film the film throws in more of these plot twists that I thought were actually really well handled where you think it's him but then you find out it could be somebody else and then you find out it's this other guy it could be this other guy who's like a neighbor and there's a really tense scene which I was surprised by how tense this was, considering how how this really wouldn't honestly. This scenario I'm going to describe to you. Does this sound tense to you? Where Kylie has to break into a house and look for a retainer, and she finds it inside of this sleeping guy's mouth. So of course she's, the scene is her trying to get the retainer out of his mouth. It doesn't sound that tense. Or that suspenseful, but the way it's shot and the way it's edited and the way it, it comes across, it's it's. I was I was you know I thought it was really suspenseful. I was like almost ready to bite my nails. I'm like on the edge of my seat, like because the, the film does a good job making you think this guy is dangerous. What are you doing? And I like this character. That's why I like the character played by Morgan O'Reilly. So I'm like, no, no, don't do that. Don't don't. He's gonna kill you. He's gonna. He's, or you're going to bite your finger off. I don't know what's going to happen, but don't do that. Don't stick your fingers in his mouth. Don't do it. And, of course, she tries to do it. Of course, he goes after her. And, of course, you find out. There are never twists. It's not him. He's, he's, he's not the guy. It's somebody else. And it's actually her, her psychiatrist, played by, um, you know, uh, Dennis, who's been trying to, you know, convince her that, you know, can't play by Cameron Rhodes, that it's all in her head. And it points to, and there's a certain point near the end of the film where it kind of makes you think it is all in her head, and you believe it. And then I was about ready to tell the movie to go fuck itself because I hate endings like that. I hate it when a movie pulls the rug out from underneath me like that, especially a movie that I'm enjoying, that I'm into, that I'm engaged with, and then it pulls this "it's all in her head" bullshit. I hate that shit. I was like, please don't do that. And the Babadook almost did that once. That's another Australian film, horror film that I really enjoyed from last year. And this, this did it, this, I thought it was going to do it, and I was like, no, please, but it, no, it didn't. Thankfully, it didn't. Eugene was real, and it wasn't all in her head. And then, you know, so there's a lot of fun, you know, fun stuff like that. And the film did a good job kind of diverting your attention. Like, at the beginning of the film, you think it might actually be haunted. I really did. I thought it was haunted. I mean, there's a reason why you would think so. Stuff's left on, lights turn on by themselves, you know, a doll's left out, and it's, you know... And you put it away, but this teddy bear comes back and it starts ta it's a talking teddy bear. Then somebody turned it on and scares the shit out of you. You would think that it's it's a poltergeist or something. You totally would. But of course then you find it's not. It's just Eugene. This guy's been living on the walls, the house. Which honestly is a little bit even more creepy. Um He watched um 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 the character played by Morgana Riley, he watched her he watched Kylie grow up and leave the house. And you think it's creepy, but the, and it is. But the way that it's handled, they show uh, he 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 drew these paintings, these drawings of her, which are really beautiful. And the way it's handled is actually really well done. I can't really do it justice. You have to see the film and see what I'm talking about. But the way that they handle this reveal of how he's seen her grow up and you know growing up, it doesn't come across as creepy or pervy. It comes across as you know kind of heartfelt. Because he's this is a this is a guy who has been terrified his whole life because he saw this murder happen and you find out in another clever twist because there's a lot of good twists in this film that kept me engaged and, and kept me involved for the plot line just you know one after another really did a good job you know making things interesting and it was actually a pretty effective mystery I thought as well as you know horror moments 
and, and and moments of fun and dry humor like and uh, you know going back to the dry humor uh, I love this scene where she's uh, Tylee's talking to the, the the paranormal investigator guy and he's like well what are you gonna do if a vengeful spirit you know comes in and you know starts being hostile with you what are you gonna do I'm gonna punch it in its bloody face you know I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick its fucking ass that's pretty much it I'm gonna punch it in the fucking face I was like that's I love that. It was just great. I'm gonna punch it in the fuck in the fucking face. I'm gonna punch it in the face. Knock it the fuck out. What else do you think I'm gonna do? I'm not afraid of some stupid fucking wispy fucking spirit. Bring it on, bitch. <laughs> I like that. And um and then the you know, so there's other moments too, little bits of humor that are fun, uh little sight gags and so forth. And uh, you know, more dry humor. But going back to the whole plot twist in the story, you find out that her home used to be a home for, you know, mentally unstable people. You know, it was like a halfway house for people who were not all there. And and so uh, Dennis used to work at this home at this at this home and before he became a well known psychiatrist, and he raped and murdered some chick. And it, he got away with it for so many years. And the only person who was a witness was Eugene. Who in many ways, because the way that he knows his way around the house, for the way he sneaks in and grabs things from his disheveled appearance, it, it it's very reminiscent of Roach from People Under the Stairs. And I wouldn't say it's a ripoff, because it's a different sort of, you know, uh, a take on it. But it, 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 it's definitely reminded me of Roach. And that was a, I thought that was a good thing. And then the climax happens where, of course, they knew who the killer is. Now it's Dennis, and he's going after them, and he's going after Kylie and her mom. And Eugene comes in and helps, but he gets, you know, looks like he might get, might have gotten killed. And you're like, man, I feel really bad for him. Of course, you find out he doesn't die, which is another thing I like. He doesn't die. In fact, nobody really dies. Like, there's a scene where I thought, uh, that's another thing that surprised me about this film. I thought that, you know... There was a scene where it looked like she, uh, Kylie killed her stepdad because she was hiding because she thought the guy who she took the retainer from, she thought he was a killer, he was going to come after her and kill her. So she hid, hid, in a shed, hid in a shed, and then her stepfather surprised her, and she stabbed him with some shears. And I thought, I thought, okay, he's dead. But then you find out, no, actually, he didn't. It was a good practical effect, but he's not dead. There's like one person, a couple people who die, like, and then a really well-shot sequence where... Um, the psychiatrist guy's there talking to the parents. Dennis is talking to the parents and another friend of theirs that's there, and trying to con you know convince convince them that you know she's really not she's she's kind of she, she's seeing things, so 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 to speak. And the house isn't haunted. That's 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 ridiculous. And then the lights start flickering on and off. And the way that the director and the cinematographer they handled this scene was brilliant. I thought it was really 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 well done. And so the lights flicker on and off, and of course they come back on, and they're like, oh, it's just, you know, it's an old house or whatever. And then each time it flickers on and off, you see the what looks like a ghost, this person in a sheet, which of course you find out is Eugene. And, and then you, you, they keep flickering on and off, you keep seeing the ghost, you know, the, the Eugene covered in the sheet. It's pretty creepy, I thought. And then, then the lights finally go out for good. And then you hear some rustling around, people, you know, talking and amongst themselves and freaked out. And it's just a black screen, completely black, with just the audio of people's reactions. And then it goes back, you know, the, the lights come back on, and then some dude's fucking dead. You know, all, all tangled up in some, uh, um, in, uh, in like a, it looked like a metal shelving you get to me. And this is after Kylie said something about, you know, murder and blah, 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 and so forth. So now they're looking at her like, well, you killed that guy. It's like, I didn't do anything. <laughs> it was a ghost. <laughs> oh, come on. That's a bunch of bollocks. It's not a ghost. <laughs> ghost didn't do this. I didn't do anything. Honest. I didn't kill him. So, and you know, I thought that was a really well-handled sequence. Really clever, edited, and really well done. And then the climax, I really enjoyed it. It was, it had this nice little bits of humor too. Like they're trying to get away from Dennis, so you know, I I love this how uh, Kylie pretty much just gets her mom to distract him by just you know being a blabbermouth. And you know, oh, I went, you know, went to the shops today, and then I met this other guy, and then you know, and then they were telling me about this, and then if you just have, you just have a uh, Dennis, just like, 
I, I really have to go now. <laughs> it's, like, it's really, it's like, oh, really? You know, how about have some tea, you know? Uh, <laughs> and uh, so it's, it's a nice little distraction. And, of course, that's, of course, when the film tries to convince you, you know, as well, that, you know, it's all in her head. But, of course, you find out Eugene is real and a fun little scene. And, and he helps them out. And um, and then you have the scene where Dennis is going after Mir Miriam and uh, and uh, and her daughter, you know, our lead, Kylie. <laughs> and they put a f laundry waste basket on top of his head. And so he's going around. He's got a knife in his hand. And they put a laundry waste basket on top of his head. And he's swiping at him with like one arm with a knife with a laundry weight ba with a la laundry basket on top of his head. I thought it was pretty funny, and I really like the camera work because they show it a POV shot from the inside the laundry basket. So it shows a POV shot from like his vision, his plane of vision from inside the laundry basket, and he's going like this. And, ah, that's pretty clever. And then the, the the confrontation then heads up to the roof, and Kylie throws a, a roof tile on his head and it's it's shot really well and it smacks him around the top of the head and knocks him off the roof and you think okay that's it but then he shows up later and he's he's choking out kylie he's actually choking out her mother and kylie got knocked out or whatever but through the help of eugene who gives her like this tuning fork which is connected to some electricity or something she stabs it right into his fucking head and then his head just swells up it swells up and then it just pops just pops like a watermelon or just a water balloon full with just blood and brain just boom just pops and it was it was it was it was gory but it was satisfying it was a very satisfying death and a good makeup effect as well and then the movie ends is pretty much there you know they've they've adopted Eugene into into their um into their home you know you know they've adopted Eugene I'm sorry like I I heard a noise, so that I was like, "What the?" F is it? Uh, <laughs> I'm paranoid, you know. So, so they adopted Eugene into their into their home as a member of their family, and then they find out the battery's low on the camera, and, and all the lights are, you know, going on and off or whatever. It's like, Eugene, stop it! <laughs> Quit it, Eugene. <laughs> and then you know that's uh, that's uh, that's the end of the movie. That's Housebound. Um, I really don't know what to say about the film. It's very straightforward. That's why it doesn't have to be that long of a review. It's a very straightforward film. That's one of the reasons why I liked it. Um, I, it's not super straightforward, but like I'm saying, it's 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 it has these plot twists and stuff, but they're not confusing. They're handled really well, and they come at the good points in the film and keep you interested and invested in the movie. And it's not a really it's not a body count film. There's some few people that die, but it's not a body count film. It's more of a it's 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 more of a uh, I'd say it's more of a a, a dark horror uh, you know comedy mystery film. It's not really a body count film. It's not there for the gore, but there's some decent gore like the like Dennis's head blowing up. Uh, but there's you know there it's it's not really a gore film. So if you're looking for that, you're gonna might be a little bit. It's not a slasher. Uh, so you're gonna be disappointed with that. It's not technically a ghost movie. It's not really a ghost movie either. So, you know, just throw that out there. Uh, but it actually ends up working in the film's favor because it's something that makes it stand out from the rest of the pack. I mean, if it was just another ghost movie in a haunted house, haunted house flick, but it's just a house arrest, I don't know what much else different it could have done with that genre. Because there's been so many ghost movies made, direct to video, and then theaters. I just, I, you know, I, I just don't know how it could really on a separate, honestly separate itself. From the rest of you know the paranormal paranormal activities and all these other you know ghost movies that, and you know that have come out in the past few years past few years excuse me I fucking lost the ability to speak for a second there um, but uh, so it did something different and actually this time around I thought it worked but anyway yeah that's Housebound I really don't want to say about the film which is rated out of five stars I would give it. Four, four out of five. Maybe I'm not giving a perfect rating because there are some moments at certain points where it kind of does drag a little bit. There's some, you know, the whole stuff with her trying to reconnect with her stepfather. I just thought was kind of boring. 
and dull and it just seemed awkward and you know I understand what the, what the film's trying to do but they didn't have any chemistry together and they obviously didn't want to make things work so it was just awkward for all for the audience watching that those sequences um, some of the humor was hit and miss but most of the time I you know I definitely got a few chuckles out of it um, you know, could it, maybe I could have used a little bit more death scenes, maybe a little bit, but as it is, I'm okay with it. I think the atmosphere was well done, the score was there, but it wasn't anything that was spectacular. Um, so that's one thing that, you know, is, is not really, that's something I could really, I don't really remember a lot of the music from the movie, but it worked with for the film, but it just wasn't super memorable. It wasn't like it was a terrible score, it just wasn't a memorable score. And, um... So yeah, it's just a little bit of pacing issues and 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 so forth. They could have used a little bit more blood and you know a little bit more gore, a little bit more horror aspects to it. Um, but other than that, I'm I was still really really enjoyed the movie. It definitely was worth my curiosity. And uh, if it sounds interesting to you guys, uh, give it a look sometime uh, and see for yourself. Uh, but anyway, I really don't know what else to say about Housebound except thank you for watching my review, and I will see you guys later. See ya.